Hello, and welcome to Retrospection Radio Live. I'm your ever-present host, Noah Martin, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Originally, we were supposed to meet with George Segal, uh, the director of Licensed Parent. However, due to scheduling confusion on my end, um, we will actually not be meeting tonight, um, hoping that that will happen in the future. Uh, my sincerest apologies go out to him if he is listening tonight. But I wanted to take some time and take the opportunity to talk about myself, because I don't think everyone knows who the ever-present narrator is, and what exactly that means. So I just want to start a little bit from the beginning. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, in a hospital that had an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. The fact that I survived is impressive, and the fact that I've still survived and not gotten Legionnaire's disease up until this point has been equally as impressive. I lived in Baltimore, Maryland for a couple of years, probably two, three years. My earliest memory is we had a swing underneath the deck that I would get into and one snowy, snowy day, my grandparents, who live in Lima, Ohio, were in Baltimore for whatever reason. I don't remember at all. And I really, really wanted to go on the swing. Or they wanted to take me out. I don't even remember if I was verbal at that point. And so I went out on the swing, and they pushed me for a while. And I just had the greatest time. And that memory still sticks in my head. One of the other things I did when I was in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, a young little kid, we had a Quasimodo blanket, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and it's still a blanket that we have in my household to this day. I remember wrapping myself up in the blanket and then walking wrapped up in the blanket. But what I didn't notice was the staircase next to me. I don't remember what happened afterwards, uh, but I do know that it was full of pain, and there was probably a loud thud. From that point on, I, I moved to Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, in a place called Cumming. Uh, not exactly the best name and spelled really <laughs> not the best way, but it was a good place. It was a nice place to live, and it gave me this suburb feel to a small portion of my childhood, where all of my friends and I were in the same neighborhood, and we would just go to the pool, or go to the playground, or hang out. There was a creek nearby, and I have some really great memories from that time. I used to go every single summer to Atlanta and spend the summer with my best friend from down there. A lot of my friends have gone their separate ways, and as with always growing up, you know, it's sad. You remember what was and what could have been. I ended up moving to Ohio in 2007. I know, I know, Ohio. But I ended up moving here in 2007, and it was a hard move. I went to Alcott Elementary, which is named after Louisa May Alcott, for about a year, and I had a teacher I just did not like at all. She was mean, she was rude, but as I was looking back through our family Amazon photos the other day, there's a picture of me and her smiling and like having a good time. But the only memories I have in her are really, really just bad ones. And I'm sure she wasn't as awful a person as my second grade self thought she was, but I just remember a terrible person who didn't let me go outside for recess or uh, extra recess and just a rude person. I, and now I can't even think, as an adult, I can't even think of the reasons why she was so mean and why she was so rude. It's just engraved into my mind at this point. So from there, I 
ended up getting overflowed into a different school. And I spent half of the next year, not only as a new kid who had just made new friends, uh, as a new kid starting over yet again in elementary school. And that helped develop me a bit as a person because I'm a pretty charismatic and outgoing guy. I can talk with people and just hang out with people. But it's really difficult for me when I'm in a completely new environment constantly to be that person. And as a kid, I made my friends and I kept them for a while, at least in second grade. But when I moved in third grade to that new school, I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anything. And luckily, halfway through the year, I was able to move back to that first school I had started with. And I was there until fifth grade when I graduated and went to middle school. In elementary school, some of the storytelling started to come front and center. I remember specifically in third and fourth grade being so enthralled with history and what my history teachers had to tell and had to say. So when I eventually got to fifth grade, I started writing. And frankly, the writings were awful. They were absolutely terrible. There was nothing good to them. They were incoherent. Um, they were probably offensive or, you know, offensively bad. And they didn't make any sense. But that sparked a passion in me, watching movies and seeing the other stories that were being told to go and craft my own stories, to hone that skill of writing. And that's my earliest memory. It was around that time I was also in a church play called Camelot. Now to be confused with a much, much more famous Camelot. <clears throat> so Camelot is like, basically it's the manger in Jesus' birth, except they just ended up like this kid falls asleep trying to or like waiting for her dad to show up from the car lot and dreams that a camel lot was there and the three wise men bought camels from the camel lot and it's a really weird Christmas story. Uh, the music is surprisingly good, but it might be just nostalgia speaking. I have the CD. I've had the CD since I was that old and it's in the back of my car still. It's been that way for probably eight years at this point uh well i guess i've not been driving for eight years six seven years at this point yikes um whew. from that point on i kind of found a uh a love for theater i ended up doing uh charlie and the chocolate factory it was awful it was it was terrible like the theater there was no stage there was no anything it was you spent twenty thirty dollars and your kid got to go to play practice a couple times and then they all performed for all the parents at the end but it was a good first beginner experience and it helped me learn how to memorize ironically i'm awful at memorizing so in sixth grade i moved on to a new school and this is where i started to make friends in sixth grade i didn't know what i wanted to do and i ended up doing rock climbing club for a little while, which was cool. But during rock climbing club, I was always playing ping pong instead of rock climbing. And I realized I didn't really like rock climbing. I just liked the people I was around. And now as an adult, I love rock climbing. It's so cool. But back then, I just I didn't like it. So towards the end of the semester, towards the end of the year, I got interested in theater. I did The Hobbit, a probably hour and 10, 20 minute show. It wasn't good. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a good script. It wasn't a good anything. But I met a lot of people who would be a part of my life for a long, long time after that point. So I did The Hobbit. And then in seventh grade, I did The Wizard of Wonderland, which was a Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland combo. I played the Tin Man, and the costume, just like in the original Tin Man, was painful. It hurt so bad, and I can't tell you what the story was. Besides, it was kind of like Camelot, where this character was like, 
I would need to read the book of Alice in Wonderland and watch the movie of Wizard of Oz falls asleep and the two combine into one. And it happens in her dreams. Whoa. So what I ended up doing um, during that time was I, I kept refining my writing skill. And this is where I started writing more and more short stories. I had this whole idea for a world that would eventually become a part of my D&D world. All of these characters that eventually became part of my D&D world that I wrote stories about. And I wanted to make full-length books, and I had no idea, and I, my writing was awful. I found some of the writings from back then, uh, which I will spare you. But they were all fun. They were good. Um, they showed how early I was in my writing career. In eighth grade, I ended up creating a writing club, which was one of my most, which was one of my fondest memories of writing. We would all get together and we would write on Fridays after school for like half an hour to an hour, and it was wonderful and awesome. I wrote a lot of stuff there. Um, there were sometimes I had ideas where I just couldn't write. But I remember spending my library time, my study hall time, and my, my, my Friday afternoons writing and telling stories. It was around this time, um, I had a really awesome best friend I was super close with. Over the course of that and into high school, we had a really big falling out. And to sum it up, because I really don't like talking about it anymore, it was a huge love triangle um, where we're best friends, girl comes into life, hits on both of us, and then goes with the best friend, and then I tried my best to, like, still be his friend, and things went wrong. Naturally, I'm not the protagonist. I... Nobody was bad in that situation. Well, evil in that situation. But I'm not innocent. Um, I did bad things and said mean things to people who had used to be my friends uh, and vice versa. They did and said bad, mean things to me. And so I went into high school with no friends and depression and pain um, in my heart. And I got into this really unhealthy habit of every time I felt an emotion, I replaced it with anger. Um, and I did that by... I suppose self-harm would be the proper wordage. Um, every time, I, I guess this is true, like every time I started to feel stuff, um, I would stab myself with a pencil or uh, close my fists to the point where like my fingernails would dig into my skin. Um, just a lot of stuff that kept me from feeling the emotions I didn't want to feel and instead replacing those emotions with feelings of pain and anger which was extremely unhealthy and took me a long long time to get over that I still have trouble with to this day it was around this time I met two people who would eventually be in my audio dramas Dustin and Jimmy um, and these people helped bring me out of my slump the pain the depression that I was in um, it took a long time, but I started to see improvements, and I had friends. I had a place to be. I was in the theater department, and the first show I ever did there was Fools. It was a great show, great set, great everything, but I was just beginning to meet people and have friends, and so I don't really have the fondest memories. It wasn't until Our Town, our second show my freshman year, where these friends that I had met, I started getting closer and closer with and realizing there are people out there who still like me for being me and for being a person. And it was there that I learned that I don't have to be alone anymore. It wasn't that long that I was alone. I've not had necessarily a difficult life, but it's something that was important to me um, to finally have those people that I could call on. Um, and to this day, I live in an apartment with Dustin. Jimmy lives down the street from me. We do a lot of stuff together, um, especially Dustin and I. It is not something that has changed. And these friends that I met 
close to eight years ago at this point are still here. Sophomore and junior year, um, I got probably the worst I had ever been. Every emotion I felt was anger. Everything, everything was anger. There's no better explanation than every little emotion I felt was just full-blown, pure hatred and annoyance. Um, I would break chairs in the green room, in the boys' uh, dressing room for theater, and, you know, I'd punch walls. I would occasionally just go outside and run until I couldn't stand and had no energy. Um, I did a lot of really harmful things, but I never did it to other people. There were times where, definitely, if I thought someone was a dumbass, I told them they were dumbass. I'm somebody who's very, very blunt, and my father and my friends all... My friends like me for it, but there's definitely times where my bluntness is not needed, and that bluntness comes across in retrospection radio, because a lot of the topics I discuss and tell stories about, most people wouldn't touch with a 10-foot stick. But I don't care. These are stories I feel like are important and need to be put out there. So I put them out there. Um, and a lot of the characters have dealt with the stuff I have dealt with because you write what you know. And that's what I know. A lot of these characters are going through the frustrations of being alone or feeling out of place in life or being angry. And especially Royal McNeil in season four he really feels these emotions of why is the world the way it is? Everything I've been doing to this point has been useless. And that is emotions that I struggle with. Um, but I'll get into that in a little bit. We still got about 15-ish minutes left. In high school, I was in a really bad environment. I was surrounded by people who constantly bullied me, um... But to be fair, I was angry and hateful and spiteful. So it's, I wouldn't say it was necessarily deserved because when I think of a high schooler, especially my high school and frankly, probably anyone's high school who wasn't an athlete. Actually, no, even athletes, now that I think about it, people were asses. Like everyone's the protagonist of their own story. And people took that to heart and made themselves pure, like the only person who could do right. And so I, I felt that. Um, I, I was somebody who definitely thought I was hot shit, and then everyone else thought they were hot shit, and a whole bunch of people who think that they're nice and steamy, all in the same room in the same area, Awful. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible combination. So there was a lot of hurt going around on all ends. And for me, since the only emotion I let myself feel was anger, I, I let it get pent up and it would eventually break out. And eventually it hit the point where pretty much there was no more penting up. There was no more storing the anger inside. It was just, it was just straight anger and annoyance. So I had roles in theater. There was a lot of other stuff that I don't like getting into on podcasts. I will at some point um, because we need more episodes about me and about my story and how we got here and how retrospection exists. But the best explanation is theater was not the greatest environment uh, provided by the director, the teacher in charge. Um, and the other students I was with. So eventually, in senior year, I did Into the Woods, which I thoroughly loved, but the process of getting there was awful, and our director practically quit and left a student in charge, which was not a good idea, because the student did a great job, but the student was having a hard time, because she'd never directed before, and it, it wasn't fair to her. <laughs> so... 
And I had just dated her the year previous, and we had broken up for a while, so, uh, there's that too. That eventually led into me... One day, I heard that the next... <laughs> the next play was something called Game of Tiaras, and it was all of the Disney princesses set in the Game of Thrones world, which may sound interesting, and it kind of does. But it was one of those plays that should not have been put on by a high school. Um, that sounds much more like a middle school thing, or a really crappy high school. And we had done a few of those types of plays that were just god-awful. Um, for instance, Pride and Prejudice, we did something called Pride at Prejudice, uh, which is a similar story, except there are four narrators trying to do a book report, and so they're narrating the entirety of Pride and Prejudice, and they're cutting out huge, essential parts of the story. So that was the type of theater I was doing in high school, and eventually I got sick of it. I quit. I, I quit. At that time, I was interested in doing voiceover, and I had just recorded a audiobook. I don't know why I forgot that word. I had just recorded an audiobook for one of my English teachers who did a study of the book in her class, but didn't actually have an audiobook and was losing her voice from reading to her class all day, every day, especially because none of the teens wanted to read it, especially reading it out loud. So I did that for her, and I'm pretty sure she probably still uses it to that day, or to this day, four or five years later. Um, so I was beginning to get into voice work. I had also successfully written a play, and that story is detailed in Super Tale, a super-powered fairy tale on the Retrospection Radio blog. But basically, I wrote a play that went around the city I was in, Westerville, and performed for a whole bunch of elementary schools. And I discovered a love for writing. So I kept... Or a love for script writing, I should say. So I kept script writing and kept script writing and kept going. And eventually, um, after quitting theater, I realized I wanted to keep up what I was doing. I didn't want to just stop. So Retrospection Radio was born. And this is also detailed a little bit on how Retrospection Radio was born on the blog. But I created the lodges and I went through months upon months of reworking the episode. It was something I would do in my downtime during study hall. Because um, I had worked in the library as a video editor. And students would come in asking for help with video projects. But when there weren't video projects, then there was no point in me helping. So I would sit back there on the computer and just type away. Um, or well, it was that time I also discovered a love for the sea. Hence why the second episode, Beyond the Surface, is a sea episode, because I love diving. Um, so I went off to write the lodges, and it was by no means successful. I posted it on soundcloud and just the first few episodes were on soundcloud i had a wix site and it, it was just starting um i don't think anchor was around that time or it was not nearly as popular as it was podbean had a free thing but it wasn't that great and so i didn't really have anywhere else to post it but also i didn't have the knowledge to know where to post my podcast so eventually i just kept doing it I got something called Mixcraft, and I started crafting music through MIDI. And I have absolutely no experience with music. I could barely read music, and I didn't know how chords worked. I didn't know how anything worked. And frankly, I'm still learning that. I wouldn't say I'm the greatest at that. However, I worked. And I really loved what I did. I had a teacher at that time where he was getting ready to retire the next year. And originally my high school had a radio station area where they would 
make a whole bunch of audio play recordings and then send it to Otterbein and Otterbein would put it on the air. So I talked with him. We got along really well and that program ended up getting cut probably a year or two after the building opened. So he had a whole bunch of scripts and old audio dramas that were just gathering dust and he gave them all to me. And I remember listening to them in my cassette player in my car. I remember I still have the book, The Shadow Knows, of the first, I think it's 15 or 20 scripts. And it influenced my passion even more. Um, That's where we see the audio quality that is retrospection radio, the classic 1930s feel to a radio on the radio drama. And... I really started getting into the brand. I started getting into the podcast. So I created more episodes and I made more music and I made artwork using Microsoft PowerPoint. (laughs) Um, And I just kept going and going and going. And I learned that this was my passion. This is something I cared about and loved. I've gone through college I did the first two years at community college almost entirely online, and then I did the final two years. I'm getting ready to graduate now. It's going to be weird when I go back and listen to this. I'm getting ready to graduate now after two years at Otterbein University, and the experience has been mediocre at best, but the amount of work that I've done towards retrospection and building a brand and building myself and the amount of knowledge I've learned from Adobe Audition and Premiere, from the people around me, the passions I pursued, I'd never have been able to do if I still was the person that I was in high school. Over the course of college, I found a drive, a reason to keep working. I made the dean's list every semester of college, and I had high GPAs. I I was book smarts, um, definitely. I persevered. I generally was two to three weeks ahead of my homework schedule, and it was over the course of senior year going into college that I finally started taking therapy. And being away from the situation, the area that caused the anger really helped. But also therapy helped. And it helped me become somebody who's much more mellow, which I feel you might be able to tell in my voice. I have my different inflections. I change my voice as I speak. But I'm somebody who has mellowed down a lot. And... I still have my angry moments. I still have my loud and exciting moments. I I am still a human at heart. But at the end of the day, I've learned to control anger and allow myself to express other emotions. I'm happy. I'm sad. I can cry. I can laugh. I can do a whole bunch of stuff that eight years ago I wasn't able to do very well. So that's who I am. I'm a storyteller. I'm a motivated person. I'm the founder of Retrospection Radio. I'm a podcaster. I'm an editor. I'm a graphic designer. I'm a voiceover artist. I'm a cinematographer. I'm a photographer. I'm a dungeon master. I'm a gamer. I'm kind of an athlete, I guess. I don't know. I play frisbee and I like to run. I like to work out. I like to live my life. I have stress. I have happiness. I have joy. I have a reason to live. A purpose. A reason that I want to keep moving forward. I want to keep making content that people listen to and it impacts them. I care about mental health. I care about other people. I'm empathetic. 
And that's the person I am. And that's the person I want people to remember me as. At the end of the day, the stories I've told, the content I've created, aren't ever meant to harm people. They're always meant to tell stories, to show the good and the bad of life that a lot of other people don't show. Those stories need to be heard. They need to get out there. People need to understand mental health and some of the other touchier topics that I talk about on this show that are the themes of seasons happen, and they happen to people. And those people need to know that they're not alone. Their stories are being told. People are hearing them. They're listening. So it's really important to me that those stories get told. At the end of the day, that's what I do. I am the ever-present narrator, somebody who is always telling a story, and I'm happy to do it. You've been listening to Retrospection Radio Live. I have been your ever-present host, Noah Martin, and hey, we're going to be back next week on Wednesday evening. We're also going to be back the week after that, the week after that, and guess what? the week after that. Retrospection is not going to be stopping anytime soon, so if you like what you heard, feel free to go ahead, go to our Ko-fi and donate. The link is in the description. Uh, However, if you don't feel the urge to do that, consider checking out some of our other content. We talk about men's mental health, we create radio drama horrors, Um, and also we have a history podcast that kind of derails sometimes into music history and other things that are happening around or modern life. All of this content and more at www.retrospectionradio.com Thank you so much for listening and I can't wait to see you next week.